turn to 1 John 4, 19. You can go ahead and keep it on that page throughout to 1 John 4, 19 through 21. It says, We love because He first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. God gives us this command that whoever loves him must also love his brother. And if you've been born of God, if you have been born again and are a child of God, it is impossible, obviously, for you to not love the Lord. There's people who, they call themselves Christians, but in all honesty, they're more in love with their sin than they are with the Lord. But we're not talking about them. We're talking about us, true believers, members of God's family, who have been adopted into His family. And if we recognize that we do love the Lord as His children, we've been commanded that we must also love our brothers and sisters in Christ. So, in recognizing that, we have to ask the question, how? How does He call us to love our brothers and sisters in Christ? How does He call us, and how do we know that we are properly loving them? How do we know we're properly loving the children of God? Well, if you just drop down two verses to the second verse in chapter 5, it says, This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out His commands. So it's right there. It says, This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and obeying His commands. Carrying out His commands, obeying His commands, same thing. So when we recognize that, that there's two ways that he's called us to love the children of God, and that's loving God and carrying out his commands. Let's take the first one and take that question of how and take it even a step deeper, how we love God. Because it's loving God, carrying out his commands. So how do we love God? Just go to the next verse, verse 3, and it says, This is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. We recognize, obviously, that there's an underlying theme when it comes to love whether it's love for God, whether it's love for the children of God, or even towards unbelievers, and that's obedience. And that's the point I'm really trying to put forth here. That's the point I'm trying to make, is that you can't have love without obedience towards the Lord. And so, you can't have love without obedience. And as I said, it doesn't matter if it's love towards God or if it's love towards His children or if it's even unbelievers. But it says this is love for God. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out His commands. This is love for God, by obeying His commands. And His commands are not burdensome. They're in fact very freeing. My relationship with the Lord. Well, directly it can't, but indirectly it definitely does. Because as your brother in Christ, I mean, when I have disobedience in my life, See, I have a fellowship with the Lord. I have a relationship here. And when I sin, I break that fellowship. When I sin, I put a barrier in between me and Him and that fellowship. Therefore, I can't be used by the Lord because that would be hypocritical of me if I had sin in my own life. See, I want you guys. I want you to serve me in my areas of need. I want you to encourage me. And I want you to correct me in my sin. But when you have sin in your life, you can't fully be used by the Lord to do that for me. And that's unloving towards me. But in the same way, I mean, vice versa, that's unloving for me to you if I have sin in my life because I'm unable to do those things for you, right? Husbands, <laughs> husbands, you love your wives dearly. And, uh, but when you're, and you want to lead them to the fullest. You want to lead them uh, spiritually and just in every way. And you want to love them with all your hearts and be the best husband you can be. But when you have disobedience towards the Lord in your life, you can't be led by the Lord to lead them, to the fullest at least. And therefore, if you think about it, that is very unloving towards your wife. They want you to be all you can be for them, right? So your disobedience to the Lord, it affects those around you. It affects your wife. And what I'm trying to get across is it affects the brothers and sisters in Christ and those you're trying to serve around you. And uh, so that's really what I'm trying to tell you. I've said a thousand times already. Love takes obedience. It goes right alongside with it. Obedience goes right alongside with love. So let's flip the switch real quick as I uh, finish up. Can you have obedience without love? In certain ways, yes, you can. I mean, the Lord gives us the command to give to the poor, right? Well, in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says, 
If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. But get this, in verse 3, if I give all I possess to the poor, thus being obedient to the Lord. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. So yes, you can be obedient in certain ways to the Lord. Obedience is not love. But when it comes to loving those around you, obedience is a necessity because you're hurting everyone around you by your sin and your ungodliness towards the Lord. And uh, that's the point I'm trying to make.